Hi, I'm Scott Now from Horton Works. I'm the CTO here, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what I call the data tipping point. This is a really important concept that's going on in the market, and you know, you all probably hear a lot about data being important. Every business is a data business. All the new fantastic breakthrough technologies out there that are creating more and more data, whether it be mobile devices, connected cars, and anywhere in between. Data is really a big deal. And all of these innovations are really driving us towards what I call the data tipping point. So let me start with the first chart here, and it actually shows what I call the epochs of data. Right? There are different epochs of data. Of course, they weren't epochs in the biblical sense. But there are long periods of time where a certain technology is very relevant and, re and really, really important. There are a couple of things happening as I walk through this uh, that are really important to keep in mind. First, the rate of change is increasing dramatically. When we talk about ERP from the 1970s, 80s, and 90s to CRM to big data, and now AI, the epochs are actually accelerating in terms of how fast they're upon us and the rate of change of technology. And that's a really important concept because it's part of what's really driving that tipping point. The second thing to keep in mind here is that as these epochs move along, I've got a graph here that's got a vertical axis that represents volumes of data. And I've got the horizontal axis that really represents the variety of data. And each of these axes is really important to keep in mind is actually exponential. Not linear, but actually exponential. So every time you go up, it's another order of magnitude or two, whether it be in terms of overall volume or variety of data. So let's start back in the good old days. We had ERP. That was the first digitization of business, keeping track of transactions, what the customers buy, what products, how much did they pay, closing the books. This really spawned a whole new era in terms of business productivity, but it was really the beginning of the data era because we now had digital assets that could be used for analytic content. And it was really even the beginning of the data warehouse movement where I now have all the CRP data. I'd like to go look at it to look for trends in the data to do pricing optimization or other things to really optimize my business. After the ERP epoch came the CRM epoch building on that similar technology, not only do I want to understand the transactions and standardize those transactions in my business, but I want to understand the customers who are creating those transactions, and I want to segment those customers, and I want to treat them based on the transactions that they have with me. And that created more and more data that had a lot more variety. Then came the web. And of course, we all use the web in early web days, right? It was about extending that user experience from, <clears throat> from the ERP transactions to customer intimacy to really understanding how customers interacted on the web. Again, data volume increased and the variety started to get a little bit difficult to process, but it was still kind of an incremental step change. At the end of the web era is where I actually believe the tipping point or that chasm really comes, where legacy technology ends its usefulness and where new technology is gonna be required. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but keep in mind, this is kind of where I see uh, that chasm in the tipping point. After the web came big data, and of course we all uh, were excited to hear about big data, kind of a vague term that was uh, uh, bantered about. People talked about unstructured data, structured data. Of course, all data have structure, but the point is in the big data world, it was no longer just transactions that were very simple and easy to parse apart, but it was very large and variable amorphous pieces of data that needed to be analyzed. Of course, we're now simultaneously living in the IoT world with all the connected devices and mobile devices, cars, et cetera, that I talked about before, sensors creating data that's very, very relevant. And of course, all of this is now driving to the super duper application that everybody is excited about called artificial intelligence, right? And artificial intelligence, again, another order of magnitude of data, another order of magnitude in terms of overall variety of data that make artificial intelligence relevant and accurate and therefore very important for businesses. So we're really at this notion of a data tipping point. When you look across the epochs of data, we started with ERP, CRM, and the web, and then we kind of hit this chasm as we moved into big data, IoT, and artificial intelligence. And there are some really big differences between the ERP, CRM, and web world and the rest of this new and emerging world. First off, in the old world, all of the data was actually created inside the firewall 
and it was standardized and managed, so you actually understood the content of the data. It was very fixed in nature and therefore very simple, relatively speaking, to process. Since the data were known, that actually led itself to optimized RDBMSs for the data warehouse world as a very efficient way to go process this information. And we applied traditional project management techniques to go build out applications in this old world. We go get the business users, we get their requirements, we would go off and do a plan, we'd build an app, we would uh, build a plan for the application, we would go source the data, we would cleanse the data, we would build the application, we would give it to the users, and everybody was really happy. And ultimately, success in this world was all about having that data centralized to take cost and expense out and also to make the processing more efficient. If you think about the new world, it's completely opposite of everything I just described. First off, in the new world, all of the data is actually created outside of the firewall and outside of your control, which means it's unknown. And so that has applicability to different kinds of optimization techniques where uh, schema on read or schema on demand becomes really much more important because you don't actually have control of the cleanliness of the data that you receive from these external sources. The process is completely inverted for those who really find success in this new data-driven world. Instead of starting with business requirements and then sourcing data and then building applications, you actually source the data first, you then use data science to actually understand the requirements, and then you go build out the applications and you actually change your business. And it's very, very important to understand that. And finally, because a lot of this emerging and new data is created outside the firewall, it may live its entire life in the cloud. So it's not going to be centralized anymore, but it does need to be connected for complete relevancy. And so because of these differences and because of the, the um, exponential difference in terms of overall volume and overall variety and functionality, I do believe that there is this chasm as you move into the new world of data where legacy technology and incremental improvements to legacy technology are no longer valid because that technology was really built for a completely different set of requirements than what's happening in the new world. That's not to say that legacy technology is bad or dated, but it's very different with a different purpose. And so having legacy technology work together with new technology is where a lot of our customers are finding success, but they're really driving the highest degree of success when they abandon some of those traditional processes and some of those traditional technology limitations and actually venture out into that new world of connected data.